On today's show, as usual, we go through the news, but we break out a brand new segment, The Unsolved Mysteries. A lot of questions still through weeks one and two. We try and get into them, figure out what's going on, break down the Thursday night matchup with General Mills. Oh boy, here we go. Subscribe to the channel, like the show, and enjoy. For Glenn, not everyone wants to be on a strict diet, juice cleansing, and going through ridiculous rule sets to lose weight. And that's where Noom comes in. Listen, I just signed up for Noom a week or two ago, and this was, in, in addition to them being a sponsor, a Foot Clan member reached out and said that Noom changed their life, helped them have a better understanding uh, and relationship with food, recommended it for me, because you don't just need rules to lose weight. You need knowledge and, and wisdom to help you build smarter, more sustainable habits. And they have a cognitive behavioral approach that helps you unlearn bad habits and better understand your relationship with food. 80% of Noom users finished the program, and over 60% have stuck with their goals for at least a year. Goals are a big part of the Noom system, hitting those goals, meeting those goals. I've got mine set up after taking their quiz. It's great. You can start building better habits for healthier, long-term results. Sign up for your trial at Noom.com slash footballers. That's Noom, N-O-O-M dot com slash footballers. Hey, it's Corlin Sutton, wide receiver for the Denver Broncos, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast back for Wednesday, September 22nd. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, I'm Andy Holloway. I am currently watching uh, my my colleague over here, Jason Moore. He's bobbing his head, he's feeling the music, and he's moving his hands around. Like, if you're watching him on YouTube, you would have thought he was typing. But he, in fact, was not typing. He was simply mime typing. What were you doing? That's a, f- that's a finger dance. <laughs> what were you doing? So, legitimately, <laughs> I know this will shock you, Mike. I was typing. You that, were acting? Yes, I was typing. Yeah, no, just- that's false. I just saw your hands. You were above the keys, and you were moving your fingers like you were typing. Yes. Uh, well, you were like this. Well, afterwards, afterwards. But the whole intro music, I was actually typing words onto my computer. No. Yeah. You're like a phantom typist. That was the softest button caress I've ever seen in my life. These soft hands are not made for hard labor. They're made for keyboards. Are you a, uh, that was like elegant saxophone playing with your fingers. Yeah, I mean, you know. Oh, Oh, yeah. That's how I type. Like, you somehow formulated the equation for the minimum amount of pressure I need to apply to this key for it to actually trigger. Yeah, and I don't want to. And that's what you just did in rapid succession. Yes. and um, um, I don't believe you. Fi- uh, 100%. Um, I, I, I scouts on her. It didn't happen. Um, but my fingertips are as soft as the day I was born. <laughs> I can't, uh, I can't play we, the guitar, that's Mike. That's what we that's, love about you. You're not... You're not. You don't have callus old, fingertips. Old soft right. tips over here. Yeah, uh, the calluses are on the <laughs> heels. Are you kidding me? Uh, Twitter at the FF Ballers. A reminder: we're on Green Room this afternoon for another live show. Uh, it's a live audio app from Spotify. You can hop on there. It's free. Download the Spotify Green Room app. Follow Fantasy Footballers. Be notified each Wednesday. We do it at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern time all season long. It's been a lot of fun. A little free flowing. Some bigger discussions. Gets a little wild, yeah. answering lots of questions. We have buy sell on the show today. Unsolved mysteries from the first two weeks of the NFL season. The Thursday night preview with General Mills himself, and uh, he's not on the show today, though, right, Brooks? We don't actually have General Mills. No, nah, he's prepping. He's prepping for the game. I we found out yesterday, Jeff Gris Jeff Driscoll is the backup to General Mills. Oh, Driscoll, which is a perfect combination. Yeah. Uh, join the foot.com's the fantasy football community. Let's do some buy sell. Buy or sell presented by pristine auction. 
You guys are on a hot streak. Aaron Rodgers last week, you bought three touchdown passes. He pulled that off. You bought Calvin Ridley, or I'm sorry, you sold Calvin Ridley 100 receiving yards. And, well. He had a good game. 63. But 63 and a touchdown does not equal 100 yards. I mean, he was probably one of the odds-on favorites for yardage leaders on the year. Yes, he was. Do you know who the yardage leader on the year is? Because I, I actually looked this up yesterday. The, the top three. I know. Okay, so Lockett has got to be close. Lockett's number three. And uh, what? Koopa, Koopa Cup of Coffee? Koopa Cup of Coffee's number two. Oh, oh no. man. We've done almost exactly what is necessary. Um, man, number well, one. Waller got shut down. Ahead of those two, two guys. Oh, oh, my gosh. Oh, goodness. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, man. Debo! I don't know how we went. Three for three last week, Mike. We are dominating, and Andy just dunked on us. <laughs> <laughs> Buy yourself for week three. Here we go. See if you can keep your hot streak going. Um, we all got the Allen Robinson top twelve wide receiver sell. He was forty five, and he could have done. He had a touchdown yeah. in about yeah. eighteen seconds, and he dropped another touchdown. That's what I was gonna say. He could have yeah. done Justin Fields a favor mm -hmm. and caught the perfect pass. Buy or sell week three. George Kittle. Buy yourself 13 fantasy points in week three. Oh, man. I am buying this. I will this sell this. This is the week. You're gonna buy, you, He's right above your head here in the studio, Jason. You just mentioned how Debo is the yardage leader. He's taken everything away from George. George yeah, I mean, Porgy. look, George Kittle still. I mean, when you watch him on the field, Georgie Georgie Porgy. 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 That's Wasn't not nice. <laughs> <laughs> George he went from the, the manliest lumberjack to Georgie <laughs> Porgy. Yeah, I mean, if he has a bad game, so far this year he's been Georgie Porgy. I believe Georgie Porgy was uh, an insult that they used back in the revolutionary time against King George, if I'm not mistaken. Really? Yeah, I Isn't would it take like it Georgie as an insult. Porgy pudding yeah. and pie or something? Yeah, something like that. A little, it has a little, nothing to do uh, with porridge? A little Mother Goose action, but I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this show is, we are. We're you are that. right. Georgie Porgy is a rhyming nickname for George yeah. Pudding, pie, pudding pie was probably added just to rhyme. Yeah, take that, uh, King George. I'm buying well, that dude sucked. 13 fantasy points from George Kittle. Has Green Bay this week. The matchup is good. Green Bay's defense has looked like they hired the wrong defensive coordinator. And I think Kittle gets back on track. I mean, it, it's it's time. I, I I would agree that this is a good matchup. Uh, certainly, you're going to play George Kittle, and the Green Bay Packers should be able to score better than the Philadelphia Eagles did last week, which will help George Kittle be necessary in the passing game. But I do think with what we've seen from Debo and what we've seen from Garoppolo, who has not looked great so far, a potential change, I'm, I'm going to sell this. I think that to get that 13-point line and half PPR – He's going to need a touchdown. That's not usually his forte. He's more of a yardage guy. That's where I was going to go. Is can, Andy, do you think he can hit that mark without a touchdown this week? Yeah, I do. I mean, he's a, he's a big yardage guy. Man. He's so, hit that mark plenty of times without. Sh sure. But I think he'll score. So, Man, I... They're going to need to score. You, <laughs> yes, all football teams <laughs> usually need to. No, they don't. They didn't need to last week. Their defense has been dominant. It's going to have to be done. Right. Is it going to be dominated about Aaron Rodgers? I mean, right against Aaron I, Rodgers. Okay, I see what you mean. I'm, oh, I'm going to buy, reluctantly. So you two finally divert. We did. James Robinson versus Arizona. Does he get 15 total touches in week one? Eight touches in week two. 14 touches. Buy or sell? I'm selling it. I, I love the sell because I think when I looked at this this morning, I thought the line was pretty high. We're asking him to touch the ball more than he has so far this entire year. But I do like – what we saw from James Robinson was that he was the clear uh, lead back. He was, he was basically a, a full-time back. Uh, Carlos Hyde did virtually nothing. And when you look at the pace of play for both Arizona and the Jacksonville Jaguars, it's actually – they are two of the faster, uh, more plays per minute teams in the NFL right now. So I like, I like this. I think the line's high, but I'm still gonna buy. I'm gonna buy because I think he is very involved this week. Yeah, we saw him jump from week one. He, uh, he saw, you know, just 36 percent of the running back attempts that jumped back up to the 85 percentile, which 
And that's a good number. That's that's very hardy if you're up in the 80s. Only saw the 9% target share, unfortunately, which is what Robinson's really going to need if he's going to return his draft day value. But I will buy the 15 touches. I'll buy that. You'll buy it. Yeah. He was uh, – what was that number, Brooks? You want to read that to me? In all 14 games he, last year that he played, he had over 15 touches. Opportunities. Yeah, wow, I and mean, he hasn't we, done it for the first two weeks of this year. Yeah, we we certainly knew that. I last mean, that, year's gone. <laughs> yeah, we talked about what James Robinson was last year was a ninety plus percentile snap and running back. He he had all the running back carries, all the running back targets, and Carlos Hyde is mostly gone, but certainly still there. Last one here: buy or sell Robert Woods is the top twenty four wide receiver this week. First two weeks outside of the top forty, they take on Tampa Bay, and Tampa Bay. Uh, his secondary uh, back into their defense. It's been vulnerable so far this year. You know, Jared Goff had a nice game against them. I look, Cooper Cup's not going to catch 40 touchdowns this year. It's not going to happen. Robert Woods is going to get his, but I don't bet on a touchdown, and I think he'll need it to get to top 24. So I will sell Robert Woods' top 24 wide receiver. Uh, you illustrated my exact beliefs as well. I, I, th I think he'll need to get in the end zone and won't this week. So I'm out. Yeah, I already have, I have him fringe right there. Like currently sitting at my wide receiver 23. Uh, I mean, it's, it's Wednesday morning, so that'll alter a lot, but I, because it's so close to the 24, I'm going to take the probability and I would sell. All right, that was Buy or Sell, brought to you by our friends at Pristine Auction. Use the code BALLERS to get a $10 credit towards your first sports memorabilia purchase at pristineauction.com. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. All right, the Browns placed Jarvis Landry on injured reserve, so he's going to miss, what, at least three weeks? Yep. And there have been two. OBJ social media posts that are hinting at his debut. Like recent ones? Yes. Okay. Yes. He has he retweeted or replied to the tweet about Landry going on IR that he was going to hold down the fort for him. Um and he's going to be and then he another tweet about like back like I never left. So OBJ so should play this week. He should not phrase it that way because if he's back like he never left, then he will be back to doing nothing for the Cleveland Browns. He will he'll be back to doing something occasionally for the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> so uh, they also said Demetric Felton, who was their leading receiver last week, running back, is going to take additional reps in the slot, whatever. Okay. Uh, OBJ is interesting this week. It is wild. I mean, I, I couldn't have envisioned a scenario where uh, Odell Beckham has been gone with injury, recovering from the ACL, and first game back, you're tempted to start him. But with – with the crazy timing of Jarvis Landry going on IR, I think there's going to be a lot of people starting Odell Beckham this week, and I can't say that that's a terrible idea. I, w I would prefer to take the wait-and-see approach, but he's going to be the main wide receiver there. The other guys have done Nothing. jack squat. Yeah, it was a shot of Higgins and Peoples-Jones and Schwartz, and no. Breaking news. I like the breaking news is happening during the oh, news Oh, you section. bet it is. <laughs> Right in the middle of it. I think this is the first time it ever. Could have just been more news. Look, at what, it just came through. Oh, this is breaking, man. It's breaking square. Oh, oh let's hear it. Uh, the Bucks have placed Antonio Brown on the reserve COVID list. <gasps> Interesting. That was, that was quite the gas. Yeah. It sounded like you reacted to breaking news, not just regular news right that there. That was. That was. Well, because I hadn't heard it yet because it just broke. Um, so the timeline here. Not good. Uh, I believe Tampa Bay is one of the teams that has said they are 100% vaccinated. So I, that I think is correct. So that means that um, I, I think that's correct. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm confusing that with Atlanta. Um, the, we'll have to see about the timeline if he can get two negative tests. But I would presume he's probably going to be out given that it's a Wednesday right now. And we've had questions in the office of who is Jalen Ramsey guarding? You know what I mean? Like it's it, it might not just be shadow coverage on someone, um, but this was a game where I thought Antonio Brown was a sneaky good play because when I think about using Jalen Ramsey, it probably would have been on Godwin, and if not, the the bigger corner on Mike Evans, leaving Antonio Brown to kind of 
do what he wants, and uh, he might not be there. Yeah. Interesting. So, back to regular news. Uh, Brian Flores announced. <laughs> not breaking. Not breaking. Uh, <laughs> oh, Tua. This one is breaking. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, 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 yeah. Tua Tungavailoa fractured ribs will not play this week. Oh. Jacoby Brissett. Hey, where's the knee? It's not ideal. It is not ideal, Mike. That is right. Not well, my what, what do you do with not my words? What do you do with anybody from the Dolphins? You bench all Dolphins. I cannot even the gas man. Even uh, if you if you can, I mean, the, at no running, way. You I mean, can't he, bench the he gas did man. very very little last week. And granted, that was the Buffalo Bills, and their defense so far through two weeks has looked absolutely outstanding. Um, and he probably will have enough receptions in a PPR league to to be. Uh, a viable play, but I mean, is he any different? L let me ask you this: Is he any different than James White with Jacoby Brissett at, at quarterback? Is that kind of the the player you're putting in your lineup? Is uh, you're saying between the two? Yeah, between uh, the gas man and James White, I'd, I'd play the gas man. Sh sure, but I'm saying uh, not. I, I would. I must be confused. I am with saying the quarterback downgrade. With now. the quarterback downgrade, do you view him much differently? Then you would view plugging a James White into your lineup, a hey, a guy who can get, you know, five receptions and 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 pad those numbers, but probably isn't going to do a ton. Slightly different, yeah. Only because he's going to get carries that James White won't get. So his his ceiling is probably higher than James White's ceiling, but yeah, I mean they're probably fairly similar this week with Jacoby and Mac. The gas man did see his. Running back attempt share drop. It was only a 53% in week one and down to 31% of the carries I am last not, week. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's just bias, but they were being blown out 35 to nothing or whatever the case was. Like the back half of that entire game, Okay, he wasn't on the field. So, right, it was Ahmed at late. So I don't know what that means. I don't know what it's going to mean with Jacoby. Like, they're pro It's probably a similar comparison with James White, just in the fact that the running, the quarterbacks aren't going to do a lot. But the wide receivers, I mean, are you just avoiding all of them? Probably. Will Fuller's going to make his debut. Yeah, I mean, Jacoby's, uh, Jacoby's not He's a good terrible. backup. Yes, he's a good backup. He's not a full-time starter. He's not – there's far worse back backups out there. <laughs> like our man Jeff Driscoll's out here being a backup. For the NFL, I would agree with you. For fantasy, I'm, I, I would disagree. I, I can't fathom starting a wide receiver – uh, for for the Dolphins, I mean, we we have enough starts from Jacoby Brissett to know that it takes a big broken play from T. Y. Hilton to to actually be relevant. Otherwise, you know, so maybe you want to throw Jalen Waddle in there because he's got the speed and he could, or you know, Will Fuller could could break something open. But I think outside of one big play, you're probably not going to enjoy starting Dolphins wide receivers. And and the Raiders defense, their matchup this week, they right. looked pretty legit too. All right, uh, Mike Tomlin says, Big Ben has a pectoral injury. Mike Tomlin says it will affect his preparation ability. We, we'd we better be ready to be adjustable. What does that mean? I think that That's... means that I, – I, so th it's a great question. Like, <laughs> what do you mean when he says we'd better be ready to be adjustable? I think that means they need to run the ball more. Tomlin is saying we need to be able to succeed at running. Um, I mean, I, I'm not a mind reader, but that's how I interpret it. Um, man, you thought Big Ben couldn't get worse, <laughs> and now uh, this isn't this isn't great news. I thought they were just like he's like we gotta be ready to go to the chiropractor to be mm, maybe that was it. Yeah, I don't see it in here, but we need to mention the Deontay Johnson news, which was like Mike Tomlin's pretty forthcoming. He's the opposite of a lot of other coaches, and he he, he was talking about the knee for Deontay Johnson. And he was saying something to the extent, and I don't have the quote in front of me, that it was doing good, not to be confused with great. That was the quote. <laughs> the knee? That was the quote from okay. him. Was that it's doing better, good, not to be confused with great. So hmm. still on Deontay watch for this week as well. He's been outstanding through two weeks. Clearly the number one target. But if he's off the field, it kind of gives you more of a, a little bit of an encouragement for maybe Chase Claypool. Claypool's number two or three in the league in air yards, but they have not connected yeah, and at I, all. I, I was talking to you guys that I went back and I watched all of the uh, that Pittsburgh game again because I was like the the end numbers for Claypool. It was he ended up with three for seventy, and it was how did we get here? And he had at 
he had at least four really deep shots, and they were good throws by Ben. This wasn't, uh, you know, Clay pulls running stride for stride with the DB, and Ben overthrows him by three yards out of bounds. It's, no, Claypool got hit in the hands. He did catch one of them, uh, but then he had some other ones that were just knocked out, which a lot of the credit goes to Casey Hayward because that's who was guarding him. But seeing those, it was disappointing that Claypool was not more aggressive in going after and saying that that ball belongs to me. I mean, He's maybe, had a rough stretch. Maybe we got a Canadian problem. Yeah, he's and, too and generous, he's, he's too, too kind. He's too gentle and too kind of if, when the 50-50 ball goes, his just that nature comes out and he says, well, no, no, sir, after you. So, I don't want to hurt. Him. Yeah. So, Mapletron, take that ball. That's yours. It's It's been, uh, and I think to what Andy was starting to say, it's been quite a stretch. If you go back and look at the end of last year, uh, week 17 was fine, but he had a uh, six-pack of games that was just, brutally bad and now he's continued there I think if Deontay Johnson um is hobbled or misses the game it's Juju to me the the short route guy yeah. the slot guy that's really gonna I mean how does he not have 12 13 targets if Deontay is gone and it might be fair to conclude that Big Ben's deep ball is lost like we don't have the same confidence in it you know at this point in his career if they passed all those short yardage routes and there's some some reasons to be concerned there. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, Andy Dalton week to week, unlikely to start the game against the Browns. Tyrod Taylor injured reserve. We will talk. Um, we'll talk about the general later on here. <laughs> that was today's news notes brought to you by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. Make sure you download the Sleeper app. Join the breaking alerts channel. You will enjoy getting the news as we did. Yes, breaking news. That's right. Uh, before we move into the new segment, which I'm, we're very excited about. I'm very for excited it. about this. I want to thank today's sponsor, Foot Clan. Today's podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. Uh, you know, my entire life, I've had mental health struggles. I've seen a professional therapist, and it is, was extremely beneficial when I decided I'm going to take this step and I'm going to help myself out, it really changed my life. And you can start commuting, communicating using BetterHelp in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. The serv uh, service is available for clients worldwide. You get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. You don't have to sit in the waiting room, that it's a little uncomfortable with traditional therapy. You get to do it all online. BetterHelp is changing the game of mental health. Visit BetterHelp.com slash footballers. That's Better H-E-L-P. Join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp, they're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. Fantasy footballers listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash footballers. We also want to thank Code Academy for supporting the show. Literally this week, I was talking to somebody that is in a certain job that they don't love, but they love computer science and they love gaming and they love coding or the, or the idea of moving into that area of expertise. But they don't really know how to move from one job to the other job. That's where Code Academy can help you reach your coding goals on your own terms. Simply put, Code Academy is the best way to learn code online. So that's, I mean, that's the headline there. They not only teach you job-ready coding skills, but they help you build unique projects for your portfolio so you can make that transition, earn certificates, prep for technical interviews. And the neat thing is, is you can get qualified for in-demand jobs in as little as two months. So if you want to make that kind of change or you want to up your skills, you can join the millions of people learning to code with Codecademy and see where coding can take you. Get 15% off your Code Academy Pro membership when you go to CodeCademy.com and use the promo code BALLERS. That's the promo code BALLERS at CodeCademy.com to get 15% off Code Academy Pro, the best way to learn to code. C-O-D-E-C-A-D-E-M-Y.com, promo code BALLERS. Unsolved Mysteries.
All right, unsolved mysteries. Thank you for that spectacular drop, Mike. That was that was a treat. Cheers. Um, number one, the first unsolved mystery that we will be diving into today. Rob Gronkowski, oh, the tight end one. Gronk, 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 gronk. <laughs> Thank you. Jesus. Yeah, that was so annoying on Sunday. <laughs> that was so great. <laughs> Mike, it's annoying because you don't get to do it. Oh, a hundred percent. And Jason? my 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 son, who's ten, <laughs> yeah. was watching the oh, game. Oh, he was in on it. And he has Gronkowski. And so Mike and my son were just alternating. Gronk, 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 Gronk. And it was um, you know, I was it's, jealous. It's super fun. Week one, eight targets, eight for ninety and two touchdowns. Week two, five targets, four for thirty nine, two touchdowns. And here we are with breaking news today that. Antonio Brown won't be available most likely for this game. Grunk, 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 grunk. <laughs> four tight ends in NFL history had four touchdowns in the first two games. Gronk's two of the four, uh, two separate seasons. Nicely done. Look, it's going to keep happening for Rob Gronkowski. Very few tight ends are dependable, predictable. He is one that you know has the mind meld with Tom Brady. Did you see his ridiculous quote yesterday? No, I would love no, to hear I did it. not. It's the most Gronk quote of all time. Yo, oh, is Fiesta? it about watching film? I don't watch film because Tom watches it and then tells me what coverages I need to know. <laughs> oh, he is who we thought he was. Things just work out for Rob Gronkowski. Oh. Tom Brady has nine touchdowns in two weeks. Is he just leaning in? I think, no, I he think, doesn't have a self awareness. I, I bet he actually watches the film. Uh, I, when you when you watch the film of Gronk and and the mind, it's more than just the mind meld that Brady and Gronk have. It's the decision making that Gronk has on the field of when to go, which direction. Like he has to watch. He's either just. I mean, obviously he's naturally gifted physically, but his actual football IQ is really really high. And if he can do that. Just by Tom telling him what to do, that's impressive. I think he's just got that incredible muscle memory, mental memory. He, he's a football player. It's in his DNA. So in terms of an unsolved mystery, I think fantasy players want to know, okay, you're two weeks through the season, but now you've got some tough matchups coming up. you got the Rams on the road, the Patriots on the road, the Dolphins, the Eagles who look great on defense so far, mm -hmm. the Bears, then the Saints. So then the a next bye. The next six weeks are brutal matchups. And Gronk did this last year. I, it wasn't at the very beginning, so it feels much different. I think that matters, but, though. Uh, but weeks six through eight, he was tight end six, tight end two, tight end four, and then 47. Followed up, tight end number one, but then number 32. He's going to – I'm with Andy that this is a this is a whole season thing that Gronkowski is a – he's a tight end one. He's – Probably you could lock in. He's going to be a, t a top he needs six to score. tight end. Yeah, here's the here's the deal. If you go box uh, score hunting through the last year plus with Gronk, he really there's been one game, one single game where you've been very happy with his fantasy production where he didn't get a touchdown. However, he gets a lot of touchdowns, so you're right. happy quite often. In fact, this kind of blew my mind. So remember, at the beginning of last year, Gronk was coming out of retirement. Uh, they had yes. O.J. Howard. So those first two weeks, Gronk was not really involved in the passing game. Throw those first two weeks out from week three through the rest of the season, which is obviously the vast majority of the season. Do you know what Gronk was fantasy football-wise? He was the tight end four from week three on through the whole season. He is legit and he's good. However, he is touchdown dependent. He's going to score a lot of touchdowns. For my flavor... I, I would prefer to have a Hawkinson. Oh, well, sure. Someone that you're going to get, you know, 10 targets every single game, a ton of yardage. Of course. And you don't have to. Well, I don't, I don't think that everybody is that way. I think oh. some people might want the explosion games of a two touchdowns, which won't be coming from Hawkinson. The big question for me, for if you have Gronk, is do are you tempted to trade him away? But, I, I mean, you, obviously you've got to figure out what kind of a tight end you've i got a perfect question for you. Let's hear it. Yeah, yeah, Rob yeah. Gronkowski for Kyle Pitts. Oh, I did not think that was the I question. thought you were going to go poor G. No. What, I thought he was going come on, Mark if, Andrews. I'll tell you right now, you should you should trade him for George Kittle if you can do that. Mark Andrews, probably you should. And then Kyle Pitts is another one where it's like, what kind of preference do you want? Do you want yardage 
or do you want touchdowns? I think I would want uh, that. That's that's kind of the the breaking point. I think that's a very very fair um, line in the sand. I would rather stick with the forty five touchdowns thrown from Brady and uh, hoping that you get a, a monster performance on uh, the regular um, with Gronk. Then you know uh, Kyle Pitts had a had a very good week too. I think he was over eighty yards, and that could happen a lot but the Falcons offense hasn't looked great he's still a rookie so I would rather have Gronk over Pitts but if I could trade Gronk for Hawkinson um Andrews or Kittle I probably would but I am not looking this isn't one of those situations where I'm going tons of touchdowns first two weeks I have to move him I have to capitalize I think Gronk is legit I think he's legit and I hope selfishly for me that by week five I'm not looking back after he has to play the Rams, the Patriots, and the Dolphins going, yeah, crap. I should have cashed in. I should have cashed out. Yeah, yeah. But my chips are, look, like, I'm riding. I'm riding with well, Gronk. Well, yeah, I mean, and your investment was nothing. It was the waiver wire. Yep. Unsolved mystery number two, which maybe is the biggest one that exists right now. Ezekiel Elliott, Tony Pollard. Right now, Pollard's the running back 10 on the year. No, he's not. <laughs> Zeke is the RB22. No. Um, I saw a metric yesterday and the metric was yards per touch okay so you're not looking just at carries or catches you're just saying when this person touches the football how effective are they tony pollard is presently the number one most effective running back in yards per touch in football however it's two weeks of the season how do you view this unsolved mystery? How What is the lens you're looking through? Because I've seen everything. I've seen people trading Zeke for Pollard. I've seen people talking about um, cashing in on Tony Pollard after two f weeks. What are the Cowboys going to do? And what is – demystify this. Do not trade Zeke for Pollard. That would be absurd. The only way that that's going to come to fruition is if Zeke – gets injured look at the snap counts 84 percent of snaps to 24 percent of snaps week one in Zeke's favor week two uh it was 71 to 34 percent and I and I get that I, I think that that's probably more accurate for the rest of the season is a is a healthier split a 70 30 uh maybe a 65 35 split in Zeke's favor you look at the routes run they're still in Zeke's favor the the targets per route run are have, I mean, when Pollard is on the field, mm -hmm. he is utilized, which means to me that they're both valuable. But I don't Would think you flex. Paul, do you think Pollard will be flex worthy rest of season? I think he will be flex worthy rest of season. He's touching the ball enough and he's uh, efficient enough on his touches. I mean, we've we've looked back over the last couple of years at some comps. You had kind of the Melvin Gordon, Austin Eckler backfield sure. three years ago a good example. Yeah. where you were happy with both players. Melvin Gordon was great for fantasy and Austin Eckler was great for fantasy. And even last year, Kenyon Drake and Chase Edmonds, um, you were less happy with the group, um, but Kenyon Drake finished as the running back 15 and Chase Edmonds was flex worthy most weeks, whether or not you had the confidence to do it. But that's kind of how I view that scary though. That statement and that comparison is scary from the what you hoped you could get from Zeke. Yeah. Because you mean, can't be happy that there's a backfield where a very relevant other running back exists for the elite production, can I, you? I, I think you – well, you, you're not happy. I mean, you want you want your guy I to I want it the, all, baby. Yeah, exactly. You want it all. Um, but I when I compare those two, right, like let's let's take a look at both of those comps over the last couple of years. You've got Melvin Gordon and Austin Eckler. Okay, Melvin Gordon and Austin Eckler, you were thrilled. Um, whereas with Kenyon Drake and uh, Chase Edmonds, you weren't. Zeke and Pollard are far more talented individually, just on the field football players, than last year Kenyon Drake and Chase Edmonds. They're far more like Melvin Gordon and Austin Eckler when you just look at the talent of the player. And so, yeah, it, it can be scary, but they're just examples of how it can work. And I think the talent wins out. I think that the Dallas offense is one that you really, really want a part of, right? You do. And I think it's just kind of a – minds are getting distorted with Pollard's hot start when you still had Zeke really effective last week. By the way, Pollard's at eight 
yards from scrimmage per touch. You guys want to know the other top five? I sure. would love to. Yeah. Number two, Nick Chubb, 6.9. Yep. There is, an, there is another running back tied with him at yards from scrimmage per touch. Okay. Tyson Williams. Dude, he's been a monster. 6.9. Nice. There's two more after that. Cordero Patterson, 6.5 yards from scrimmage per touch. Melvin Gordon, 6.4 yards from scrimmage a per touch. A 70-yard run will do that. <laughs> I know. I know. Hey, uh, do you want to know the basement or should we leave that alone? Uh, oh. Just give me the worst. Is uh, it, is, oh, God. The worst is Mark Ingram at 3.0. Sounds okay. about right. James Conner's the second worst in football at 3.3. Sad. Alvin Kamara. Yeah. Oh. 3.5 per touch. Saquon, 3.7. Clyde, 3.9. I thought you were going to say Clyde was the worst. Alvin Kamara is maybe a nice segue to the next unsolved the, mystery. Yes, yes but yes. The, uh, uh, my piece on, on Zeke and Pollard is I think our hope for that Zeke could return to being that monster top five running back, I think that is gone. And I don't think that's – Because of the receiving work. Because of the receiving work. Where – and it's – yeah, Zeke is out he, – he's doing a bunch of pass blocking – Certainly, but he's out there. He is running routes. I don't know why Dak isn't looking for him like he has in the past. Maybe it's just he likes, you know, his options with Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb now. Uh, he's just – and the tight ends, he has more confidence in those players. Yeah, CeeDee Lamb makes a difference. But the if you're seeing two targets a week for Zeke, then the, the top five hopes are gone. Still, a, I believe, a solid running back one because of the volume and the offense that he's in. So I'm not bailing on Zeke, but that hope in the draft season that at the back of the first you got a top five guy, I think that's probably gone. Al, are you play you just wrote in our Slack channel that you're playing both? Is that Pollard and Zeke? No, that was in regards to Pitts and Grunk earlier. Well, never mind. Mm. <laughs> uh number three unsolved mystery. We talk about it every offseason. There is turnover at when it comes to fantasy defenses. You kind of have in your mind when you start the season, this is a good matchup. This is a bad matchup. This is a good matchup. The Carolina Panthers defense and then the Washington football Oof. team defense. You started the year saying, hey, plus matchup against the Panthers, bad matchup against the Washington football team. Mm -hmm. And then through two weeks, the Panthers week one, 14 points allowed, six sacks and a pick. Second week against New Orleans, the more impressive week, seven points allowed, four sacks, two picks. They added um, uh, Reddick. Uh, over the in the offseason, who's been a very effective pass rusher for them. On the other side, Washington gave up 20 points in week one against the Chargers, and may maybe much worse, 29 points given up to the Giants in week two. Only one turnover. What do you do with these two mysterious situations? Should we start changing the way we look at our matchups? Well, let's let's take a look at each one individually, and and keep in mind that this is indicative of the rest of the league. Like, be open to change, be especially on team defenses. The, there's too much uh, personnel changes on an 11. You know, there's 11 people that make up your your defense uh, on the field. So the Carolina Panthers, I, I really, it's so hard to say because you're talking about they played against Jameis Winston, turnover mm -hmm. machine, and rookie first game ever, Zach Wilson. Like, this is – you want to inflate and get something wrong? This is set up to do it. But, man, I believe. I have watched these games, and whatever you want to say about Jameis Winston and his turnover-prone nature, okay, that's fair. But what about the New Orleans Saints offensive line that is legitimately very good and got decimated? I mean, just outclassed by Carolina last week. We just talked about – Bottom of the barrel yards per touch, Alvin Kamara? What? He's not bad. He's outstanding, and Carolina shut him down. Um, so when I've watched these games, I've been blown away by the Panthers. Um, I think that they are a really, really great defense. Ooh, Oh, speaking of this, I just realized our waivers must have gone through. They did. I'm playing against Andy. Did I get the Carolina defense against you to go up against General Mills? Let me tell you the answer to that, Jason. I have it. Oh, no. I've got the answer. You're too happy. I didn't get them. You saw right through me. You did not get them. <sighs> Woo. Man, waiver shows suck for me. Your bid was four, and the winning bid was six. Darn it. 
Mm. Well, Did you good... get a mic? No. Okay. All right. Sorry, Jay. That's Thanks. disappointing that you didn't get them. Yeah, for one of us. <laughs> so, uh, I my position on the Panthers' defense, because of how atrocious they were last year, the rebuilding process, and the fact that they played – what we've now seen, I mean, there's two two quarterbacks leading the league in interceptions right now. They're both rookies. It's Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson. You played Zach Wilson in week one. You played New Orleans in week two with Jameis Winston, who struggled mightily. I expect them to succeed on Thursday night, but I will be curious how they perform against a powerful Dallas defense, uh, a, a tough offense to face in Philadelphia with Jalen Hurts running the football, and then the ever-efficient – Dalvin Cook plus Kirk Cousins and Justin Jefferson in week six. So would I sit somebody because they're playing the Panthers right now? No, I wouldn't. But I, I am that, intrigued. Good, I am intrigued. That is a good way to look at it. Does their defense affect your decision-making on the offensive side? And and right now, I probably would not as well. Um, I think it is possible by the time – like, you're not playing any Houston Texan today, and then you're going to sit the Panthers against the Dallas Cowboys, not going to sit any Dallas Cowboys. But if the Panthers show up against them boys, you might be hesitating about starting Jalen Hurts sure. uh, against the defensive Now, Mike, what is your viewpoint? Because I think you can interweave the Washington defense with how we saw them narrative-wise playing on offense, right? Like, you, you kind of – we all viewed them as a great defense mm -hmm. that maybe puts the offense in a position where they can do what they did last year, which is – win with kind of a, a muddling uh, Gibson-led, run-led offense. Is this defense not as good as we thought it was, or are they just finding their footing to start the year? I uh, Man, they are one – I mean, it's perfect that they're in the unsolved mystery area because they are one of the most baffling things about this NFL season to me so far, uh, like especially against the Giants where – Yes, Daniel Jones is is showing up, you know, and he's he's playing pretty well, especially for how much crap that everyone gives him. But the fact that Washington uh, Washington couldn't it didn't just demolish him for, uh, and that offensive line, that's where it's really worrisome if you are playing that DST and now, you know, are they worth holding on for you you see that as a fantasy defense. Yeah, you see that Atlanta matchup and the Saints matchup coming up in in weeks four and five. That's juicy. I want in on that for Washington. At least the defense I thought they were, but they got to play Buffalo now. Are they are they good enough that you're gonna play them against Buffalo and take whatever number they give you or stash two defenses? And I think that answer has to be no. You got to move on. You got to pivot away, uh, and. And just take that lump. Yeah, there's there's no way I'm wanting to play Washington. Whether I would hold them depends on the other uh, options on my bench and the waivers. But I would be looking for a different uh, DST to play uh, against Buffalo. Unsolved mystery number four, Clyde Edwards-Alaire. In week one, 14 for 43. Week two, 13 for 46. A tweet this morning from Jared Smola summarizes, uh, or summarizes yes. sorry, the – Situation. 51 running backs have 10-plus carries through two weeks. Clyde Edwards-Alaire ranks 51st in Pro Football Focus's running grade out of 51. 49th out of 51 in elusive rating. 50th in yards after contact per attempt. Um, He's 3.3 a carry this year. He was 3.8 from week nine on last year. With the fumble that cost them the game. With yeah. the fumble that cost them the game. Uh, this team right now doesn't need the running back to be the focal point of the offense. There's no real reason to believe that they would make him the focal point of the offense. Right. So expectations moving forward. I mean, I have seen the widest gamut of what do I do is with Clyde Edwards, Alaire, And when I say that, I mean, trade offers, Right. Do I trade him for – do I drop him? I've seen that. Oh, don't do that. I, and I've also seen, like, do I trade him for James White? Do I trade him for some Tony of these – Tony Pollard. Uh, Elijah Mitchell. Um, so I'll give somebody else the floor here to weigh in. The uh, The first thing 
that uh, what I'll start with this. He's <clears throat> those numbers are not surpri surprising from that Smola tweet. He, if you're watching him on the field, it he looks bad. But what's the the craziest part? And this this just fits perfectly with uh, what I, I I think the rant was yesterday of just it was sometime this week of why did you draft Clyde Edwards a layer? Like w as a team, what were you doing if you're not going to throw him the ball? Currently, Kansas City. 8% of their targets are going to the running back position. That is dead last in the NFL through two games, where last year they weren't setting the world on fire at that, but 18%, and which was right in the middle, 16th. So, you know, I would imagine that just will, will naturally turn into more targets for Edwards Alaire moving forward, but at this point, I mean, he's... He's probably going on my bench if I have if I have anybody that I can plug in over him that I think is a top twenty four running back or even a top thirty running back. I'm going to let Clyde Edwards Alaire sit for the future. Chargers, yeah. Eagles, Bills, football team. Next yeah, I mean, four weeks, w you know, with the exception of uh, teams that just completely shut down uh, the the running game. You know, the the Steelers. Uh, who, outside of breaking a long play, you just don't get to run on them at all. I, I don't think that the Kansas City Chiefs are one of the offenses you really match up, hunt against. You know, they're, they're going to be able to score. The problem is, like Andy said, they don't need Clyde Edwards-Alaire to score. They don't, they don't have to rely on him to be good because of Pat Mahomes. But Pat Mahomes is so good that the offense is going to score a ton of points. They're going to get a ton of yards. They're always going to move the ball. And he is still the running back getting the vast majority of everything. Uh, he has done very, very little with it. And outside of that fumble, they have not needed it. They should be 2-0 uh, if not for that play. And uh, this is one of those you don't want to overreact because in the end, take the names out of it, take the the you know take every take a step back and think about it this way. This is a starting running back getting the majority of the work on a great team. Every you know you you look back at all these different teams, all the Andy Reid offenses, even the Pat Mahomes offenses, and you will find bad stretches for. Everybody not named Travis Kelsey, weeks in a row. And if these two weeks, these atrocious showings, happen in week 12 and 13, um, you know, you, you look at his rookie season, right? Like Clyde Edwards Alaire was not special. He was a major disappointment and very valuable on, you know, a, 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 the course of when he was playing. He was still at the running back position. I think that the, the hope that I had of having the, the high upside, the the year to leap forward as a player, that looks like it is unfortunately shot. But he's still a player that is getting the majority of the work for a great offense. And I, I can't imagine that I would look to move him while his value is super low. Um, I wouldn't trade him for the Tony Pollards and James White. Would you of trade the world. him for Tyson Williams? I wouldn't because if you look at Going forward, Tyson Williams could – if if we say crystal ball four weeks from now, is Tyson Williams the starting running back for the Ravens? I would say probably, but I know Clyde is the starting running back for the Chiefs outside of injury, and I, Tyson just carries too many variables. There's two, okay. two things I'll, I'll throw into in this. Number one, this will be the worst game of Clyde's season. The game this he one just, coming the up? Game, no, the game he just played. Yes. So the game he just played will be the worst production you get from him. So if that echoes what Jason's saying about like, you know, it'll be better. It doesn't mean it'll be great. So the second thing I would advise people with Clyde is don't consider him to be an anchor to your running back room for your fantasy team. Mm -hmm. You may you need to adjust. If if you had him there, go pursue another running back. Go reinsure that room. Clyde looks better in the flex this year than he does in the sure. RB two spot. So if you if you can go do that, then you're going to I think stabilize your team a little bit and just change your expectations. And the just again on the targets. I'm sorry, I got to harken on it, but in a game where your number one wide receiver is taken out, like Tyreek Hill was removed 
very successfully by uh, uh, by the Ravens. And that turned into nothing through the air for Clyde. It, it was like, oh, well, we're going to give Pringle a shot. Demarcus Robinson, Hardman, let's give all these guys targets. It was but don't, it, don't very you remember? Strange. I mean, wouldn't you say that the fact that they are basement, dead last in targeting the running back, and that that wasn't how they were last year, they were just average NFL, wouldn't that say that it probably yes. just bounces like regression would go yes. up for passing to the running back. Yeah, I totally agree with that. It's he's just I'm not just, been good with it. I'm scratching so they, my head over here. They changed the play. I mean, he had one catch in three of the last four games last year. So if they throw him the ball, you're going to be super helped in fantasy. Yeah, but they seem to be not wanting to do that the way they did with Damian Williams. Two and zero Raiders is the last unsolved mystery. We will be brief here because we got to get into into the Thursday night preview. Derek Carr, can he finish as a top 12 quarterback? Are the Raiders legit? He's the quarterback eight right now. They just, I mean, he put up 56 pass attempts against Baltimore, 37 against Pittsburgh. He's taking shots down the field, which he has not always done. Brian Edwards, one week. Yep. Henry Ruggs, the next. Darren Waller, every mis week. mismatching every <laughs> DB in the world. So, I think they're real, man. But I, but I picked them to win yeah. against Baltimore, and I believe in them. Derek Carr has not seen a start like this fantasy wise since 2017, which was the MVP season. Uh, was that the one? I, I have to imagine it was. He he started a year where they were what nine and zero, something ridiculous, where they. Where he was being talked about no, as an MVP then, candidate, and then the final game of the week of the year, he got hurt, right? Yes, that, that was 2016. Oh, so you're saying 2017 he so, started hot as so well? In 2017, he started off as the QB nine and the QB five. He followed that up, oh, yeah, by being the uh, quarterback 30 and then getting hurt, and then was mediocre the remainder of the year. The year before that, however, the 2016 year, nine five, 22 five six. That was the year I think that they had won quite a few games. Yeah, if you look at that season, they started one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, That's eight, so nine, ten, long ago. ten and two. They were ten and two in twenty sixteen with Derek Carr. I believe that the defense has improved enough for them to be in every game this year. They were one play from knocking off the Chiefs twice last year. I'm gonna say that uh they're gonna stick around. They got they may get a layup this week. I know we joke about it being like this is the game the Raiders would lose to the Brissette Dolphins, which it super is. Like, this is the game that the, the <laughs> Dolphins' defense has three touchdowns and Brissette does nothing. But um, look on paper, this is a team that I think could start 5 or 6-0. and oh. Man, whenever you finally believe in, in the Derek Carr, John Gruden Raiders, which happens at some point every year, <laughs> It's like, the, it's like opposite Tinkerbell. <laughs> this is fool me once situation. I'm sorry, uh, Raiders fans. I I can't buy into the legitimacy just because of the history. And and you're 100 percent right. They should they should smoke the brissette led Dolphins. Smoke that brisket. Oh, smoke that brisket. Oh, smoke yeah. that brisket. <laughs> um, oh, smoked brisket. Mm. Had some yesterday. Um. But I I do think that, you know, I I think this is a 500 team. And so being 2-0, uh, having some great wins, I don't buy that they are one of the best teams out there, um, that they're an 11-12 win team, not in that division. Um, and uh, we haven't seen, I have not personally seen enough. I realize Edwards had a good week one. Ruggs had a good week too, but I don't know that we've seen enough from the those two wide receivers to like prove it yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, sure. I mean, it's it's still been like week one was entirely Darren Waller. I mean, at the very end of the game, Brian Edwards came to life. But if you turn the TV off with three minutes left in that game, you'd say, "Well, I'm cutting Brian Edwards." Sure, and he I mean he had the touchdown call back. It took a a miracle in week one for them to win, which it happened, <clears throat> but it was still a miracle at the end of the game that they were able to come back and win. Uh, Pittsburgh, it was very close until they, they pulled away at the end. I think they're a good team. I, I, I don't 
what mystery are we trying to solve? Are we saying like the Raiders are going to be great, or are we saying Derek Carr is going to be an excellent fantasy quarterback? I think the mystery is, is there's a lot of the, mysteries in the mystery, just yeah. like the breaking news in the news. I, I think the mystery <laughs> is it seems like the Raiders are great. Are they? To which I say, sorry. I'll say they're they're good, but unfortunately, are they going to make the playoffs, Mike? Sixty three percent of teams that go two and zero make the playoffs. Great question. They will not win the division. But that's not saying much. <laughs> I know, I'm, but that's still huge. They are winning the division. <laughs> um, I don't mean over the year. I mean like yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, yes, right now because the Chiefs are one yeah. and one. I, uh, I will say that the Raiders don't make the playoffs. I would say the same. I think what they a, do. Yeah. And I'll, I'll say this: if they're a good team, remember the implications. Josh Jacobs is amazing when they win ball games. Sure. So, yes, I mean, in their every victories, single victory, like week one. <laughs> He was amazing. He was amazing, and they won. Yeah, well, Except no, I, he was terrible, but he scored a bunch of points. Well, he came came off the field, not a lot of opportunities. No, it, it was the Ravens' just, D. Just but a, just a haven't goof. you made that point like all off season? Like yes, like how as the Raiders go, Josh Jacobs goes, and one hundred percent chicken or egg back and forth. So if you do side with me that they're legitimate, then it may have implications on like you could probably pick up Jacobs' soups cheap. You can get Jacobs right now. Yes, very very cheap. <laughs> Thursday night breakdown. They are going to play this one. Uh, the Carolina Panthers traveling to Houston to take on the Texans. DraftKings Sportsbook line Panthers minus 80. No, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. They are going to dominate. I thought this that was game. a joke in there from Kyle, but uh, I that's saw a, Brooks deleting the zero. Yeah, it's a decimal missed. Man. Yeah, you're fired, Kyle. Uh, <laughs> minus eight, but it feels like 80. Over under is 43. I mean, honestly, that says something to me. Like, eight is not – I mean, that's by far not the biggest favorite of the of the week. That says to me that, the, look, the book, uh, the bookmakers, they're, they're asking the question we asked about the Panthers as a whole, that we asked about their defense. They're saying, okay, we got a couple weeks sample size. It's been a little hot and cold on offense at times. Mm -hmm. um, but we're not, we're not going to go crazy here. Like, Houston won a game – they actually competed long into the Cleveland game, mm -hmm. and uh, that was due to punting on third third down, basically. Oh my gosh! That was the key to victory. Oh my gosh! Punting off, <laughs> but oh, no, no, they, no, no. It was yeah. They they, they declined. They declined a third and ten chance instead to punt on fourth and two, <sighs> which is oh my gosh! To play the field position game when their punter then kicked it into the end zone <laughs> and lost a bunch of field position. Would you have given him credit if he punted it down to the one? None. No. Okay. Uh, the yeah, I know he gave the other team the ball. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which is the way to win if you are <laughs> right. He's like, well, our offense can't get it done. Let's uh, just take it. <laughs> the implied point total twenty five and a half for the Panthers, seventeen and a half for Houston. We don't have to linger too long in this matchup, but. Thank God. Because we're, we're fantasy football players. <laughs> General Mills was 8 for 18 last week. You don't touch him with a 10-foot pole. No Lucky Charms this week? No, you're getting whatever. You're getting tricks? No, you're not getting – I mean, tricks is fine. I'm just throwing – I don't even know if tricks Mills. Tricks is more exciting than, than, than there's a, there's Davis really, Mills. There's only two questions even on the Houston side of the ball. It's can you – flex in Brandon Cooks, who's been great. Of course you can. For the first two weeks um, with with General Mills. And, yeah, you, you can. I Oh, man, I want to hold my breath, and I would prefer OBJ to. OBJ or Brandon Cooks? That is a great example. I, I think I would rather go Odell Beckham, and that's me taking that. I don't know that General Mills is going to be able to do anything in this game. And then the other question is, will Mark Ingram – Get more than nine and a half carries this is very important. That is a very important let's, question. Let's get that. Why? Why is that so important? I can't even remember. Um, well, I uh, I think that. Uh, oh. I think that Andy and I are are in on him getting. <laughs> would you more. say we're banking on it? <laughs> I would say we are. Well, we're banking on uh, that. And let's talk about Christian McCaffrey and, and forty-five and a half receiving yards from Christian McCaffrey. Well, root, uh, root for us. <laughs> I mean, look, it, it's going to overflow into Twitter Thursday night, no matter what. Like, yeah, we got we got a few bones on on that happening. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, but ride or die together, brother. That's right. We're in it. Christian McCaffrey is 
an unbelievable football player. Uh, since week eight of 2018, he's finished outside the top 10 at the running back position four times. That is 31 games. That is not normal unless you're Christian McCaffrey. So heavily involved in the receiving game. No matter, this is three quarterbacks now, right? We've, we've been through this with Cam. We've been through this, um, you know, last year when he left. And then here we are again with Sam Darnold. Can you play DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson in this one? Yes, you can. Can you start Sam Darnold in this one? I think would be a, an interesting question for fantasy players looking for a spot start. Maybe. I think that you you can, but there's as a quarterback too. This is, he's not in my QB one streaming. I agree. Because there's some really good options that we gave uh, uh, yesterday that I would much prefer over Darnold, like really? Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah. I mean, I I do I do like the options. This is a great week for streaming. That, but I, that's all I mean. I yes. would put Sam Darnold in that mix, and the fact that you can get him ahead of the week in Thursday, and you know, get out ahead of it to see, you know, maybe you've got some uh, safe options and some boom bust options. I would be fine streaming Sam Darnold. I don't see him having fewer than two touchdowns. I mean, it's possible if Christian McCaffrey gets two rushing touchdowns and the defense gets a touchdown. It could go sour, but in general, looking at this defense and what the offense has been able to do, I, w I would imagine that Sam Darnold will get two-plus touchdowns. Um, so I think he's fine for, for streaming, and, and obviously every dump off to Christian McCaffrey goes to Sam Darnold. He's, he's been good for fantasy so far through two weeks, and this is a great matchup. I, uh, I expect this to be a Thursday night game like we sometimes bemoan in the sense that – the Texans have proved that they're an established the run offense. It's all the more needed when you have Davis Mills. The less times he throws the ball, the fewer times that you have Carolina with the opportunity to sack him, which they've done to both quarterbacks they've faced, and cause turnovers. So whether that's Ingram, Lindsey, David Johnson, or all of them, ugh, it's going to be a slogging – let's grind it out type of game. For if you had to start one of those running backs, and I apologize to anybody in that situation, who would it be? It would it would be Mark Ingram to fall into the end zone on a on a pass interference play that brings them down to the one-yard line. That's probably what it is. Right? I mean, it's, it's that or David Johnson. I get that Phil Lindsay had the touchdown uh, last It was a long week. one. Yeah, you know, it, it was a good play, but that was uh, Phil Lindsay with – Five total opportunities on the – or five attempts, six total opportunities on the week. Let's play Robbie Orr. Yeah. Robbie or Marvin Jones against Arizona? Marvin. That's a Marvin for me. Yeah, Marvin. Robbie or Rondale Moore against Jacksonville? Depends what I need, but probably Rondale. I'll, I'll ride the snake on that one. Yeah, that I'm one. Riding, I'm riding it this week. I'm yeah. riding the snake this week. <laughs> Rondale is in my lineup. I found out that you against are the Jason. devil. Ride the snake. Robbie or Pittman? <laughs> uh, I would go Robbie with the ankle worries. Yeah, with... if, if I knew right now that it was Carson Wentz for sure, I would go Michael Pittman, but we don't have that luxury. Robbie or Kenny G? Robbie. I'll take Kenny I G. I think I'll go Kenny Galladay there against the Falcons. Yeah. yeah. This is your... Big Kenny Galladay week explosion, Whoa. right? Didn't you predict that he's well, going to have yeah. a good game this yeah, week? Maybe, maybe I did say that out loud. The, the Falcons secondary is so bad. You, can, if you want to go narrative, squeaky, what about Corey Davis? Squeaky wheel, for Robbie Kenny. Anderson, Corey Davis for our friend Al Borland. I would go. Who do the Jets play? Denver. Uh, give me Robbie. Yeah, yeah. I go Robbie. Yeah, Robbie. Robbie. Any sounded, other sounded like I said, any Mar other breaking Margo news? Robbie. Mar oh, oh, and play the Panthers D. Yes, play. And the remember to take your Thursday night players out of the flex. Oh, that's good. We have not really brought that up a oh, lot this year. Shame but on us. Not on that Christian McCaffrey was in your flex, <laughs> right? <laughs> but like, if you're starting Robbie Anderson, that's he's probably you know someone that you'd have in your flex. Move him out of your flex into the wide receiver spot. Leave your flex position open so that later in the week, if you need to pivot to a different uh, position. You have that ability. All right, that'll do it for today's Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Thank you for tuning in with us. A reminder, the Start Sit tool, all of our rankings, you can find them on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. See you on Green Room. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.